Greetings, Warlords. Welcome to Saga Thursday, the show all about the skirmish miniatures game from Studio Tomahawk, joined by a special guest, Alex, uh, the creator of Studio Tomahawk. How's it going? (laughs) Good, good. Yourself? Awesome. So So you. it's uh, been a while since you've been on the show. I looked in the last um, video that we did. I can't remember if we did one or two, but it was November 2018, so just about five years ago. Yeah, I spent a long time in my cave, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so that was a Book of Battles preview and Age of Magic preview. So, uh, you know, I think Vikings Crusades would have been out by then. Or, yeah. 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 So, wow, how the time... The time flies, but uh, I have seen you since then at, at Adepticon and, yeah. uh, you know, just with other little chats and communications here. So uh, thanks for, for coming on. We're going to hit you with some some questions with the hard the hard questions here and you can uh, answer them truthfully or, or, or Both, deflect as you <laughs> deflect as you fact. see fit. <laughs> um, so everybody wants to know uh, off the top here uh when is age of chivalry gonna come out and it is the next book correct it's the uh, next book it's the one that we are working at the time um long story made short the book that started with uh being planned as six factions book okay. and quickly evolved to something like 10 or 12. so um it took much more time than expected um, we we have almost all factions done. I'm not sure it will be ready this year, but first quarter of next year, hopefully. Okay, cool. So so it's a the... big boy. It's really, really big boy. It, it's a period we, we really love, something that I really wanted to do since you know, many, many years. And uh, we, we are finally getting close to... Uh, the release we are closer than we never were <laughs> okay cool yeah that's a good point so you know you're kind of doing one book a year ish but alexander yeah. was six factions and adding yeah. on to stuff that was already started yeah um and hannibal and was we, six we, we are eight. never working on a single book at a time you know we have always always by two or three books worked on at the same time by different writing teams or writing mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, looking forward to that. Um, so I want to thank you. Um, we do have the factions. I revealed those with your permission to the yeah, sure. uh, Patreon folks already. So if yeah. people want more information on what's coming there, they can join the Patreon and watch that video. So, uh, you know, Saga players, Alex, are never, never satisfied. Uh, so, you know, we no chivalry is coming, but what's... Can you can you say what's what's coming up after chivalry? Um, the, the the book after that would be the first one to be ready after chivalry. All right. <laughs> uh, we, we, we have um, two books that are currently being really worked on. The first is um, is Age of Caesars, okay. which is the final one in the uh, classical trilogy, which will wrap up the um, all kinds of. Uh, people in sandals and uh, in tunics, you know. <laughs> okay. So it will be focused on the Romans from the uh, late Republic to the Empire, Middle Empire, something like that. So mm-hmm. they expect um, um, at least yeah, a couple of uh, Roman lists um, and uh, their enemies. And I will let people imagine what which. There's a few thing. candidates there, yeah. Yeah, awesome. definitely. Okay. Well, I think so. It yeah. will be a six-book faction, like the um, the others, and uh, we have then uh, three books about the classical period, which is, I think, quite nice. Yeah, that's cool how that's working out. So, yeah. So, Age of Caesar is definitely a candidate there, and I think that's you know, if you're a veteran saga player following everything, that was probably going to be your guess, but. Yeah, uh, there could be something else, maybe. Done yeah, before something, then. Uh, something else. But uh, I think you get uh, a good idea of what it is. No, uh, don't uh, you? Okay. <laughs> well, we'll get to, uh, we'll get to that. Yeah. yeah, we'll speak about it later. But uh, yeah, that uh, the age of Caesar is 
we we didn't want to have all books about you know uh, Romans and Macedonians and all all these kind of you know factions going one after the other because if you don't like the period you know you can have two or three years of you know uh, uh, no man's land when it comes to you, factions you like so we. We always do one book, a classical, the plan was one classical book one, and another book, then one classical, one other. So Chival, mm-hmm. we went between the Alexander and Caesar, and maybe another book will be released before Caesar. Awesome. So I'm just going to throw this in there. So Alexander's the only book without a Roman faction. Yeah. What, yeah. Was there talks about you know just putting it in to keep the streak alive? No, because we we knew that we there the, the, the will be uh, at least two factions of Romans in the last book. So, okay, oh, okay, cool. Good yeah, to we'll know. have two two in the Caesar book. Interesting. All right, I'm gonna have to because go back to my Imperial history. Imperial Roman or late, re- at least there, there will be one late Republic. Yeah, I was Roman. gonna say, yeah, there is kind Imperial. of like uh, you know Marius and Sulla, yeah. you know, kind of like a pre yeah. pre empire. Yeah, yeah, that could could have been that's, distinct. That's the plan. That's the plan. I could have the one that used the um, you know the Germans and uh, the Iberians and all the like auxiliaries, and then the later reforms that really made the auxiliaries part of the legion, mm-hmm. which is quite uh, different. Quite different. Cool. Looking then forward to it. To translate that into the battle boards. Awesome. All right. Well, if. Uh... Saga, over by you is anything like it is over here. There's a lot of crossover with bolt action players. Yeah. Um, and I see World War II picks popping up on the Studio Tomahawk Facebook page. So um, is, what, what do you want to say about that? What's, what's going on there? It's our next game. It's quite separate from... All the other lines, like we did for Muscat and Tomox and uh, other games, uh, it's mainly the design of uh, Fred, my my co-owner. Yeah, I'll be one, Fred. Yeah. yeah, and uh, Alex, uh, Captain Miller, as we uh, as we call him, um, and they really wanted for some years to to work on the World War Two game, and uh, yeah, it's basically getting close to being finished. Um, I helped them writing the rules. Or editing the rules and um, yeah it will be nice it will be something um, like a very skirmish feeling uh, smaller in scale than um, than bolt action okay okay closer to muskets and tomogs if you see what I mean mm-hmm. we'll use cards like muskets and tomogs but not, not in the same way actually um, think of it uh, as um, between a Congo and Muscat and Tomogs, okay. when it comes to some of the mechanisms, um, but it, it does its own identity, of course. And uh, but but if you are familiar with either Congo or Muscat and Tomogs, you, you will will feel in um, yeah, in a known place. Okay, cool. So it doesn't require that much figures. It really focuses on the infantry combat and uh, the morale, and um, yeah. Okay. Is there an interesting mechanic or anything you'd want to yeah. reveal? Yeah, just so, so ba- basically, people... the, the Fred has done a, put a lot of effort into the way that the morale of the units, the ability to, to, to stand their ground is represented in the game. It's actually a, a World War II game when you don't kill that much figures. Okay. <laughs> okay? It's more about, you know, putting fire to break the uh, the resolution of the enemy. Um, because it, it was a joke we had many years ago because we, li- we really liked bolt action. But we said if the, the amount of casualties of World War II was the same as in a bolt action game, the, la- the World War would have lasted three months. As <laughs> well. Yeah. Well, yeah, if you do read like a lot of books about battles and stuff, you know, that time, only one in however many guys fire their rifle and stuff yeah. like that. And, you know, so, um, yeah, I think that's an interesting space to to explore there for sure. Um all right. So looking forward to that. Any time timetable on that? 2024? 
Yeah, probably. end of 23, uh, early 24. Okay, cool. So The rules are, are, are finished, done. Uh, it just now... They have been written for the first time, and we 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 are working on the manuscript right now uh, to edit it, uh, write it, add examples, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to make it something that can can publish. Awesome! Glad to hear. Looking forward to that. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I'm one of the rare guys that has, doesn't play bolt action, but. Uh, my buddy says he he's, he's the one that comes out like you're coming over and I'm gonna make you I'm gonna make you play it. I'm like okay, all right, okay, good. Let's do it. <laughs> all right. So that was a few few questions I had for you. I would say three for me, and I've got seven more from the Saga Thursday patrons, and these were submitted by them and kind of voted on by them, and so they I put them in order of the most interest. Uh, to the lead, there there is a lot more questions than that, but we're just going to do seven for today. So we're going to jump right in. Oops, not the Britain talk. We're going to uh, first question here, Daniel Neal. Uh, what was the rationale for the figure count rule change for bonus dice? So do you really look at social media for for saga stuff? Because when the the fact came out, yeah, you know, people had a lot. To say about this particular change here, um, so what? Yeah, what, I, tr what do you I want to usually say? try not to look that much because. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely not personally. Uh, yeah, because to... we have our reasons. Um, we try to to we make mistakes. Obviously, we make mistakes, but we try mm -hmm. really hard to think about it changes, and uh, sometimes people. Don't see the wool picture because we do, we do not publish the wool picture at the time, you know. So to Daniel, I would say, yes. Uh, first of all, I think it's a, really a storm in a teacup because that doesn't change that much because it really has impact on a very very small number of units. So mainly the warlord typically the is warlord. is the one who the warlord will get and, and by any this. unit made of a single model. Sure. But if you look from 2018 up to now in Saga, we had more and more of these units made of single model, okay? Um, I don't think that um, any model that can really, really push hard the number of you know, attack dice and uh, casualties inflicted on the enemy is really a good thing for the game itself. It can really make some bad experience for the newcomers. And um, it really limits our design space when it comes to a bonus attack dice. Okay. So the idea to, to restrain that was basically to, to limit the number of dice these units would get, not from standard attack dice, but from bonus attack dice. Okay. That was really the idea of, of it. Okay, so kind of like a maybe like a hero, like yeah. a, you know, hero hammer. But you know, yeah. back in the the Warhammer yeah. days, people yeah. didn't like uh, the heroes having such such power. So yeah, no, kind, definitely kind and, of bringing and, that back a little bit, maybe. Yeah, and um, some so in, in some factions have because we 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 might have factions coming with a lot of heroes. If you have abilities that can add four attack bonus dice, and then you can add more during the combat step, you know, the melee step. It really gets out of control at some point, you know. Yeah. Okay. And so, yeah. To, just I have no clear. problem limiting the warlord itself because <laughs> it's really a central piece. In some, in some faction, it really needs to do the job. It really needs. But then that's why advanced saga abilities exist. Mm -hmm. We can make it work without, you know, even with the attack bonus dice limitation, you know. And uh, we, we, when we wrote that um, new version of Saga, we already had in mind the uh, some of the changes we wanted to have on the existing books. Of course, they will come out uh, one at a time because it's a huge lot of work, and we have mm -hmm. other games like the World War II that 
um, really needs our attention, but things are, are coming, you know. Um, okay. For example, people will see some of the, these um, changes in the uh, FAQ for the Age of Crusades, which will be the next one to be released, uh, hopefully in September, October. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, and so just for this figure count rule change for bonus dice, this was in the FAQ 2022 when the New, yeah, rule uh, books, the new rule book came out. And we so it, rule book. If, if you don't know what we're talking about specifically, I would go back, look at the fact, but then also have the rule book open to that page. And um, just because a lot of people get confused on step two, bonus dice, step three, when you're triggering melee yeah. abilities here. Yeah. So I don't want to add any confusion here unnecessarily, uh, but go back and review that. All right. But so, you do have played with that quite a lot um yeah i don't think that changes that much most of the games you know yep all right moving on to brit buell what's your hope and vision for the saga universe moving forward so this one's pretty pretty open-ended yeah, yeah um, it is. so i'm yeah i'll just add to this is there you know we just had this new rule book you know, would there ever be a Saga 3.0? Uh, will there ever be an end to the, <laughs> the, the age books or, you know? Um. Yeah, it's a complicated question. Uh, will, will there be a Saga 3.0 third edition? Yeah, if, if I say no today, it would be a lie because you never know what happened. Sure, what happened. yeah. I got already some ideas of things that I think would uh, change, um, could be improved, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. I got a vision for that uh, sometime, but it all depends on how you want to do things. The more you you publish stuff, the harder it gets to make a new edition because you have two options: either erase the board and say all universes books are out of date with the new edition and we start from scratch. Uh, this is something Game Workshop does quite well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, it, that's how they roll. Really, that's how they do it. Yeah. Uh, it's not something we really want to do. No. Um, but again, um, if you do a new edition, it also means that uh, if you want previous books to be compatible, I basically you you have to limit your, your the changes mm -hmm. make to the game. So it takes a long time, it takes a long um, time of thinking. If we do it one day, and um, I have no no idea when you know. And if today I have no idea when, it means that at least before twenty five it won't happen. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. So, uh, given the timeline of everything. So, okay. That's good to yeah, know. If we decide one day and I really think it won't happen uh, to, to, you know, to say, okay, we, we want to start from scratch again using the basic basics of Saga and reworking a whole new rule book and with universes book, we will tell the community. Mm -hmm. If we think it's good for the game, that's a good thing of, you know, we are not making a living out of Saga or any other game, you know. So we do things that we we feel is right for the game or that we like. Um, that's right. And if, if, if we think at some point that it's something the game needs, we will do it, even if it means making a lot of people angry, because when you say things like that... Um, People get angry, you know. But we, <laughs> yeah. do not, we do not have any plan at the moment to do it. And I don't know if it will happen or not, or if we will find at some point a way to do a Saga Third Edition using the same books that existed, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, yeah, we should reiterate, and you kind of talked about this in our first interview from five years ago. You know, this is a side side thing for you. So, yeah, no, it, it didn't you know, you're, change primary interest is having a good game yeah and, you know not you know one of your rationales was 
if it was a full time thing, you would have to be coming out with new stuff purely for, for money to put, to pay your bills. So yeah, no, definitely, you know, uh, and we we will communicate more and uh, do things a bit more professionally on the uh, on the marketing side and uh, all the things we don't do. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Because we, we, we the time we, we can spend on the, um, on our games is dedicated to actually design stuff. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Now, there's a few questions about specific ages. We'll we'll get to. But I yeah. mean, do you do you foresee this kind of one-ish book, age book a year for Saga continuing for the foreseeable well, future? Uh, we, we got quite a few ideas of things that we could do. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, we, we, there are some periods that we will never do with Saga. Okay. okay. Make things clear. Do you want to you wanna reveal? Or, or is that one of those where you say you'll never do it, then you'll, think, you'll get an uh, idea? You know, when we, when we get into the age of gunpowder, okay. I yeah. think so. the heroic aspects of um, the kind of things that Saga represents, you know, mm -hmm. uh, gets quite dilutated, you know, if you see what I mean. Um, like uh, the Prince of Orange, uh, I don't think it would work as a warlord for Saga. <laughs> or, or Napoleon, you know, Napoleon. Sure. Uh, as yeah, a, as when a the generals... And things like that, you know. It would when generals be... stop leading the armies. Yeah, then, definitely. Then Saga will... Doesn't make sense. So, so we, we got still quite a lot of things to cover. Uh, I think a really, really, um, yeah, Egyptians, uh, Assyrians, and things like that. Go kind deep, of, so. deep ancient. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Biblical. I think that would be really nice at some point. Um, the other aspects are what are. I think I would like to explore at some point. And I mean, I would like, uh, basically, I don't write that much books anymore and I have people writing for us, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, some like the Greek mythology or the uh, everything about around mythology, like uh, a bridge between the historical universes and the Age of Magic. Sure, yeah. That, that... That's something that we really, would really like to do at some point. It's definitely fertile ground there. And it is distinct, you know, from Age of Magic, where the focus, you know, yeah. anything goes versus, you know, we're doing, you know, the Trojan War, and there's centaurs and minotaurs yeah. and titans and stuff running around too, or something like that. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, of... we, we had some ideas uh, at some point, you know, I would like to do, because I'm a huge Conan fan, um, Ooh, I would yeah. really like at some point, you know, explore the sword and sorcery um, general. Okay, cool. Well, it sounds so, like there's a lot of yeah. lot of juice in the tank there, and yeah, Saga yeah, won't no, be yeah. and know, given that ending. And quite slow, but slower than people would like us to be. <laughs> uh, I think we got quite a few years before we, we tackle on all these things, you know. Wow, I'm still... I am one of the slowest painters alive, but I'm still trying to catch up. I don't. I still don't have a, a faction for every age. Um, sure. All right. Well, let's move on to the next one here. So this one's kind of a, a double question here, and you did touch on a little bit. When are the remaining 2023 facts coming out, particularly for those war bands that were adversely impacted by the earlier rule change for bonus dice? And then that was Perry, Craig, and Jean. Medado, can we expect a yep. fact for Age of Invasions? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Age of Invasion, Age of Crusades, um, Age of Vikings will get a full fuck. Okay, and you mentioned okay. Crusades was the next one. Yeah, in September was, or I'm, October. I'm, I'm still working because it's a thing I'm doing myself. The Age of Vikings one, and uh, Julie and Fabien wrote the Invasions book. Just sent me a draft for uh, FAQ on that book. Awesome, cool. So those are coming out. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Crusades is the next one. Yeah, um, and maybe Invasion as well, or just yeah, okay. a, a couple, so one kind of... month between them. And then a bit later, because it's a huge one also, uh, the Age of Vikings. All right, cool. And, and the I... plan is, when, when they are all being released, 
because we we will touch a bit on the balance, change a few factions that or a couple of abilities here and there that mm-hmm. we don't really like. What I would like to do because it will be a, a process that took a while. Have maybe next year a small supplement which would be you know the updated battle boards in the sickle package that people could Ooh, buy yeah because a lot of people are really like myself actually don't like to play with tickers on the battle board yeah i don't so, yeah i don't uh, mark mine up i just kind of yeah, try to remember we, we, you know we, personally we will definitely at some point next year do a, a print run of the uh, updated battle board a limited print run when when done done you know uh but yeah and sold cheaply yeah. so people can just update uh, their, their battle board. That sounds awesome. Yeah, that was actually one of the questions for that didn't quite make make the cut here was would you do battle boards? And I know you guys have been as you know, you do a run of Age of Vikings, you know, yeah. three thousand copies or whatever, and then as it sells yeah. out you do a new print run and, yeah. and people have told me that they've seen the updated you guys are kind of updating them as you go. Um but this will be perfect for all that, you know, yeah, veterans no, that you got, you, you know, I'm not going to buy solely Age of Vikings to get a couple new boards. But if I can get a whole pack yeah, of the 15 or 20. Which will contain, yeah, all the battle boards that have been undated. Uh, so if you are not only playing Age of Vikings, of course, you will get battle boards for other universes. Yeah. Because we, we do want, want to, 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 to do separate projects. It's basically something that we we will likely sell at cost. <laughs> Because you know, yeah, I think just we like, want to uh, make money on uh, it. Just something that we we are doing for for the, uh, the players and the community. That yeah, that's awesome. I'm excited for that. I think that's a great idea. And just kind of do this this catch up. You know, we've gone through. It's and then that's... Age of Magic will get his own um, FAQ at some point. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Well, let's. Pop down, Bill Dodds. Would you consider new battle boards to extend individual books as yeah, supplements? Um, here? What do you for for mo- for most universes? No. Um, and for example, Age of Vikings. Um, honestly, I, I won't release an Age of Vikings supplement, which would be basically a supplement to a supplement for <laughs> two or three factions. You know. And if we go to six or eight factions, which is the size of the book, we are quite delving uh, in really, really very niche kind of factions. But doing a book about a period which is closely related to an, a universe already existing, yeah, that could work, you know. Mm-hmm. For example, when we... We, we have, have an example Age of, of Chivalry, <laughs> Yeah, Age of Chivalry, we wanted it to be compatible with Age of Crusades because there are overlaps. Oh, okay. You see what I mean? If you look at Age of Crusades, the end of the period is around the 13th, very early 14th century. That's exactly when Age of Chivalry starts. Mm-hmm. So there are overlaps. And basically... For the same reason, you can play, you know, Age of Hannibal and Age of Alexander and Age of Caesar against each other. We wanted Age of Crusade to be played against Age of Chivalry. Interesting. So that's the the first I've heard about that. So um, are they like play play testing against each other and just kind of make sure that, you know, the levels and and stuff? Oh, cool. Oh, that's great news. Yeah. Um, so, so for the time being, yeah, we, we for when it comes to historical period, we really see the Dark Ages as being made up of Vikings and invasions. And mm-hmm. we have played with invasion factions against um, Viking factions. It really works. Um, the same will go with the um, Middle Ages with uh, Crusades and chivalry and of course we got the classical with uh, uh hannibal alexander caesars okay that's cool that's good to know as uh running the adepticon tournaments that's good for me to know as well yeah, you know that no, definitely I, and um, i was curious and, if yeah, we, we can, it could be we, we have with these three periods of time and if you 
if you take a look at the way it, they work, uh, it's like a fresco, you know. Classical ends with Middle Empire. Age of End Division starts with late Romans. Uh, it goes up to uh, end of uh, yeah with the 13th century, and we go to Crusades, uh, chivalry, okay. etc. Okay. And cool. then we can add books that will fit into in these three big periods: Classical, Dark Ages, Middle Ages. Okay, interesting. Oh, that's cool to hear. Now, you mentioned a historical. Now, that is an indication of magic and fantasy there. Yeah. You would. And uh, I don't know. Should we give them the big news here? Of course. Well, let, of course. I'll let it come from your mouth. Uh, yeah, we, we, we got um, a very brilliant boy. Um, someone very gifted and talented working on Age of Magic 2 with six brand new factions to expand the existing ones uh, and uh, a few exciting new ideas. You All got right. an idea of who, who that is? What? Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> brilliant, brilliant praise commentary there. So, I am actually uh, working on Age of Magic uh, 2.0, uh, a supplement, an expansion, however you want to yeah. word that. Yeah. And so I pinged you last year just with some, I kind of had some thoughts churning and was thinking to myself, you know, I can, I can make this, you know, what, what I was thinking here, but maybe I can like make it official or something or get a, 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 a blessing or something and get it on the Studio Tomahawk website. And then one thing led to another and you yeah. had some ideas and I had, a, a few ideas we we merged them and now i am working on age of magic 2.0 and uh it's exciting i'm learning yeah. getting behind the scenes stuff it's kind of cool i've always wanted to yeah i've always kind of dabbled actually with with rules and stuff like that on the side so it's, it's cool to finally be able to to work on on something under the tutelage of the master here yeah you're doomed <laughs> your soul is us <laughs> so, um, so and so no, no, it's good it's really exciting uh i really really love eight of magic uh and i think you you had really the right state of mind to do it or like the universal aspects and compassing aspect of the Age of Magic book. And um, yeah, there are really some really, really exciting uh, um, stuff coming out uh, from uh, Rhodes Mind. And uh, uh, can tell, he won't tell it himself, but his patrons have some sneak peek of what's coming up and with our blessing. Yeah, so we did a play test uh, the other day with some some patrons, and so at some point here, this is a long process. I'll probably, you know, just kind of the creation of a saga book is kind of interesting uh, yeah. to see. So I might keep the patrons informed behind the scenes how that's going. But it's a multi-year process. Yeah. Uh, so you got to be pretty pretty passionate about it. But you know, my background is fantasy. You know, from the longest time Warhammer, and so I really wanted to you know get more out there for age of magic and kind of delve a little deeper give give more options for events and stuff so yeah another six factions and then we've got a lot of room in the back of the book there to play with some some yeah. new stuff um so no, some new optional rules maybe some some scenario we're still trying to figure all that out but uh very Happy to let that out of the bag. It's cool. Yeah, and Age of Magic was a bit special as come when it comes to universe book because that we discussed that. Um, but you know, community doesn't realize that it was really created in different safe mind because we knew Age of Magic will bring a lot of new people to uh, mm -hmm. Saga. It was the first contact with the game system uh, and a universe book, so we wanted to keep. The factions as simple as possible. Abs uh -oh. Yeah, and now, people have picked up on book, that. If you're a veteran player, you know yeah. you might not be as enthused about yeah, the boards. But we we really had in mind the newcomers, and basically we were right because a lot of people discovered Saga with uh, Age of Magic. Uh, it really is the only one that challenges Age of Viking when it comes to sales, mm -hmm. a number of copies sold. 
And uh, but with a second, with a, a sequel, let's call it that way, uh, I think we got more room to explore some more um, elaborated uh, designs. Yeah, so already, you know, we're stepping it up with a little complexity there, yeah. um, adding a little, some, some nougats there um, with uh, different uh, battle board functions and stuff. Um, so definitely closer to, you know, traditional kind of yeah. historical saga yeah. boards. Um, in so the idea, yeah, is, um, I think this will, of course, make all the eight of Magic players happy, but also bring some attention to the saga veteran historical players that really want to explore more, yeah, complex or not complex, but yeah, more dynamic battle boards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looking forward to it. So hopefully, yeah, with this new book, I'm hoping, you know, if saga is your main. Uh, there's little kids running around our house yeah, right yeah. now. Bugging me. Um, yeah, so, you know, just to show that Age of Magic is still still being supported and, yeah. you know, new stuff is happening there and course, just yeah. kind of uh, adding to that. So um, looking forward to a multi-year process. So um, we'll we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I'm learning yeah, about everything I behind really, the scenes here. Really, and really it, great. So awesome. it will be really, really nice. And, uh, yeah, I think people will really love it. Okay. So absolutely happy to get that out there. Well, we've got a few few more questions here. Yes. Um, so this is kind of another combo one. Mark Darling, hello. And thank you for the wonderful game of Saga. Any thoughts on Age of Samurai that a few people ask about? And yeah. Steve, will yeah. Saga be expanded to include Asia, Japan? China, etc. So, uh, is that people? Yes. People want that to happen. Is that? Is, it is it that... will happen. It will happen. Um, back in the uh, 2018, when we released uh, the second edition of uh, Saga, there were picture of uh, samurai figures, and um, everything that is pictured in that book will get a new universe book at some point. Awesome. But there are subjects, or at least periods, that are much, much, much harder to work with than others. Mm -hmm. If we take Age of Samurai, which is would will be the title, no spoiler, um, everybody wants to play Samurai at some point. So we yeah. cannot have a book with a single Samurai battle board. Because you, nobody wants to play German, like a German in World War II, or... North versus North in uh, ACW and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, but we want to, we are working on the way to do it properly. We, we have been working on that in quite a few years. Uh, there was some missed attempt, attempts. Uh, it will be done at some point. Okay, cool. But it will take a bit more time. So, yeah, it's kind of like it's its own. Separate yeah. thing, you know, kind of like how yeah, chival yeah. chivalry Definitely is taking longer. Really separate from anything else we have done. Mm -hmm. So you, you won't be able to play samurai versus Vikings and things like that. Oh, yeah, you could, but... Well, the rebels, yeah, the rebel yeah. sagas out there, players could, but yeah, definitely... We, we, we know there are quite a few factions that we can include, Koreans, uh, the monks, and all, all that kind of stuff. But really, it's about how to make... Different player each playing samurais because Japan is a long story of uh, civil war, you know, and war between uh, uh, different clans and how yeah. to make this work. So I think, yeah, Saga is actually the perfect system for like the Sengoku, yeah. Jedi, the, the civil yeah. war. Okay, you yeah. know, they're all yeah. samurai. They're all, I mean, they have different color armor and stuff. I'm sure, but yeah. you know, the troop type. It's like Age of Viking. You know, it's just dudes with swords. You know, yeah. but the battle boards make them unique. So you can have similar troop types and the different clans, the Hojo, Takeda, you know, yeah. I'm sure yeah. they have a but well, their do, play do style. Want, that brings a lot of new questions. Do we want really to just take it on the clans of the Sengoku Jedi? Do we want to expand to cover all the period? But then we cannot have one battle board by clan unless we want to make 24, 20, 30 battle boards. It's really, sure. really complicated. 
if if you really think about it for some minutes, you see that it's really a complicated um, book because it's not easy to approach. And we are thinking we've got a lot of ideas, uh, still working on it. Um, but until we get the ideas, that's how it should be done. We 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 won't really dwell into it. But it's always sometimes somewhere in the back of my mind. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, you could be really, really focused, you know, yeah. on the Sengoku or like Steve, you know, should, should there be a Chinese or, you know, the Mongols came over yeah. a couple of times yeah. with the Koreans yeah. and stuff, Obviously, you know. need to be, to be included as well. Uh, even, you know, I definitely want a, a battle ball for the pirates, for the Japanese pirates. Oh, pirates. yeah, uh, that'd be cool. I definitely, but... How to make, you know, if we imagine that two thirds of the players will play samurai, we don't want them to use to all use the same battle board. Definitely, yeah, that makes so sense. There must be a way to do it, and it won't be a way just to put two or three different battle boards. Um, a good idea. I cannot tell you, but okay. Uh, well, good, good to know. Yeah. It, yeah. Whatever way you do decide, there'll be plenty of people who will yeah, say, why did you do it that way? That's not the right way. You should have done it my because, way. Because I got the idea, but uh, I, I'm lazy. I find the right people to, to do it. Awesome. All right. Well, a lot of good info there. All right. Robbie Matthews, is there a new book of battles on the horizon? So it's been about five years yeah. since yeah. the last one. Um, so I think... That supplement you could see like a 2.0 or something like that. Is there plans for that or, or thoughts there? Yes and no. Uh, okay. Not a book of battles uh, 2.0 or a second uh, a sequel to, to the uh, book of battles. But we are we are working right now, um, and it should be ready before the end of the year. We, we had a lot of feedbacks from people organizing tournaments that really tried a lot of different scenarios from the Book of Battles. We had feedbacks from them uh, and people getting back to us saying, I want to organize a, a tournament. What do you recommend using us for scenarios? And we, we try to give them, you know, indication about the Book of Battles, etc. And we said when, at, at one, one point we decided that would be much easier if we provide that. So we have been working on a on a set of scenarios. I think it's six or seven scenarios uh, that we have been playing since a while, testing brand new scenarios using no new material, but giving different you know tactical challenges. Okay. That have been play tested in a couple of uh, French tournaments actually. And we get feedbacks, and uh, and then publish it as a downloadable uh, PDF for free awesome. on our website. That sounds good. Yeah, and it will be, and we will indicate the way we do tournaments. It doesn't mean that it's the only way to do saga tournaments. It's just how we score points, how we decide the winner, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. A few advice to people who want to organize tournaments, and uh, they can, uh, and a set of scenarios they can choose from for their event. If it's just one day event, they can pick three of them. If they've got mm -hmm. a big, huge event, they can play all seven of them. Awesome. Oh, That's a just, great idea. Yeah. So, yeah, if you're new to running events and stuff, just having some kind of document or, you know, exactly. official manual. And making to... it a PDF, it's because there will be some mistake in the book. We can change them, upload a new version, and just tell everybody a new version is available. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. And make it a living document. That would be good. So, yeah, I definitely run a lot of uh, events here and I've you know, been working on scenarios. So it'll be good to have a few, few new ones in the batch. And, and I'm pretty sure people will will submit some scenarios or we will see someone and maybe, you know, add new ones. 
Because oh, okay, that's a great idea. Things that can be downloaded, yeah. you know, we can contain versions. We just have to indicate, like a FAQ, we can we do it every year. So maybe every year update that booklet mm -hmm. and uh, provide new scenarios. So no book of battles too, but that one well, should be ready before the wow, end. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, I think actually, uh, yeah, most people might might prefer that approach to just another book of battles, one and done. Um, so, all right. Good news. All right, moving on. I think this is the last one. Gabor Kovac, let me start. Can you cancel the activation granted by Resolve? The Goth Saga ability if the activated unit has two fatigue. So this one is background for people who aren't on the Discord. This has been raging back and forth. I've seen it multiple times here. So the ability would seem to... Um, let you activate a unit with multiple fatigues and your opponent cannot use those fatigues. Now, some would say if you look at the the, the wording and going into this and that, that uh, if they have two fatigues, you can just cancel it and then the ability doesn't happen and, uh, you know, problem, problem solved there. So what... No, as soon as the ability is triggered, you look at all the effects and they come into action. If you see what I mean, they are in effect. So basically, as soon as the dice are removed, uh, you will activate the unit and the uh, fatigue cannot be exploited. All right, you heard it here, folks. We got the official But I will, add some, I, I will write down and um, add it to the FAQ. Okay, yeah, so Age of Invasions FAQ hasn't come out yet, so that might have just been yeah. another blurb this, on there. This, this so. is a candidate for, for its own line, no problem. <laughs> And um, yeah. Awesome. Well, that is it for the uh, questions from the patrons. For this one, at least. Uh, I think in the future, maybe trying to do something once or twice, uh, no or once a year or every other year or something would be cool. Always a pleasure to come. But no need to wait for five years because before <laughs> sending the raven in my cave. <laughs> awesome. But so you guys are so what we've learned overall is you you are busy for sure yeah. so um it's a very small show you've reached out to different folks to help you know i'm helping yeah. with an age we have age of magic we have age of chivalry age of caesars we've got the facts we got the tournament document you're thinking about the next ages down the line we got the world war ii game so you and you have a full-time job because you don't want this to be your no. full-time yeah. job so you're you're spread pretty thin, but somehow, somehow you're making it happen here. So, yeah, uh, yeah. I want no, no, to people should, should, yeah, they should just keep in mind that, yeah, we, we do not communicate that much. We post a few pictures of our games. Actually, Fred does. I'm too lazy for that. <laughs> uh -huh. but, uh, yeah, we, we work in behind the scenes, sometimes more, sometimes less. It depends. We have families. We have other hobbies. We have work, daily work. And it all depends on um, yeah, the time we can spend to, to focus on Studio Potomac. But <clears throat> we are really doing it as a labor of love, you know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, uh, we, we always think about the community and uh, serving best, uh, the best material we can do. Um, we don't listen to them always because you cannot always listen to everybody. Uh, but um, yeah. we discuss a lot of them when we go to tournaments or sometimes we chat. We have we had some chats together and um, yeah some feedbacks you gave me and it's very interesting uh, i look at all the shows the podcasts uh, in my car when driving uh, i listen to the kind of things That's right yeah so you said you know uh you you listen to the saga thursday faction reviews and yeah, you definitely. know when people say they never use an ability or something like yeah. that that's gotten yeah. your your juices flowing and stuff and i think um yeah, we kind of saw that with the, I would say, Age of Hannibal, I think. Yeah. I think that's the most clear. So, you know, we talked about the Carthaginians, which is yeah. a decent board, but there was a couple of abilities that just never got played. So um, you went ahead and changed those. Yeah. And, uh, you know, same thing with uh, Numidians. And I think that might be kind of a focus for this next round of facts. Yeah, is definitely. to try to we, we listen to everything. clear out. And... Uh, if one person tells you something, 
it's an opinion. If 10 persons say the same thing, it's a fact, you know? <laughs> sure, yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah, I think that will will do it for today. So yeah, great chatting with you. And um, did you want to? Have you made any plans about Adepticon? I know you. We are we, yeah thinking uh, about we, it for this yeah, year for, for next year. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I really, really enjoyed my trip. Uh, it was really a pleasure to meet you all there, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to actually come back. And now with the pandemic and all the stuff really behind us i think it's time to consider the, the trip again awesome so yeah looking forward to that maybe this one yeah. or the next year we'll we'll see uh it'd be yeah. good to uh meet, and uh, meet i will let there. everybody know uh when, when we make the trip so uh, mm -hmm. we'll be ready with uh, some uh, some stuff to share great to hear well yeah thanks for the chat all the i know people love all this extra info and stuff you're dropping they'll be hanging off for every word coming up with theories in the discord about things you you know p possibilities for the future so uh looking forward to it now, and now, now they know that you 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 are inside you know the cave you have your own <sighs> you know, small small face in the cave around the fire you know yeah yeah i'm a little <laughs> worried about that please do not send me messages asking me about age of magic or what's going on <laughs> you know that was that was what i was worried about i said you're doomed people will just start pinging me unsolicited uh about things and you know i should do this or that so uh it's being worked on um i guess yeah. you could send me stuff but um yeah we're, we're already fair fair way through the okay so you know where we are what percentage would you say that the age of what we've done so far you know where how that compares yeah um, i think it's a very uh, low percentage but maybe yeah uh, what do you yeah. it's a very low percentage but it's the most important one which is a design mm -hmm. there's a backbone of of what we want to do you know mm -hmm. but uh basically um yeah sometimes you know draw, drawing the uh, uh um, house plans it's not one that takes the most time but it's the most important one mm -hmm. you know but it will take time to build the house to find the uh, uh the ground where to build it yeah and, uh, this is the kind of the, thing we are working foundation. on right at the moment we have we have the plans good now it's putting all the uh, the stone and uh you know all right so we've got... we have not reached the roof yet <laughs> no definitely not um so yeah we're fleshing out the battle boards and stuff but yeah. all right well yeah we're coming up on the timeline here so thanks for for this and i um, really excited about everything you had to say and yeah we'll we'll do it again thanks for everything at wrote absolutely all right well we'll see ya Bye bye. Yeah. Saga! If you'd like to see more Saga content, consider joining the Heathen Army over on Patreon or popping on down to the Saga Doors Day Discord server. Links below. Thanks, guys.